try that again because you know it's it's been a while since i've been able to say that here so good morning friends it is good to be in worship with you this morning um you know it seems like i haven't been here for a couple of weeks because i haven't so uh you know if you're if you're wondering what's going on um a couple of weeks ago I'm assuming raking leaves uh, I tweaked my back and um, so I wasn't able to stand and move and that made it a little difficult to be here and and then on top of it uh, you know my my wife and my beautiful wife Karen and I we got visited by COVID and so we've been you know isolating and restoring and uh, we're good and God is good and I thank you all thank you for all of your prayers and your and your kind notes uh, many of you sent texts and email and and reassured us and um, and some of you brought some wonderful food and, and we appreciated all of that but so we're back here this morning and it seems kind of weird to say we're continuing in our sermon series a very different Christmas because I haven't had a chance to preach a message in this but but last week um, if, if you were here or part of our worship service uh, uh, my friend uh, Barb Fay a retired clergy person she brought a message last week and and bless her heart she said well Kevin if you were gonna be there what would you be preaching on and so I gave her the scripture in a brief synopsis and she had a wonderful message that fit very well with this. So um, we're going to be in this message series now. Uh, clear through to the Sunday after Christmas and uh, we'll wrap it up but but what I want you to know is um, the idea for this message uh, series a very different Christmas comes from a book that I bought and read oh gosh seven eight years ago now it's a book written by a, a pastor his name is Mike Slaughter um, and the book was titled Christmas is is not your birthday and it's interesting because that that title can sound a little snotty can it get almost a little scolding a little critical Christmas isn't your birthday now if, if Scott Mikey was here today he'd be raising his hand because our brother Scott his birthday is on Christmas but but it's interesting that Michael Slaughter chose that name for the book and, and I understand why and what's even more interesting is if you go to buy the book now the newer publications are no longer titled Christmas is not your birthday now the title is a different kind of Christmas so maybe he figured out that people were taking I don't know but but anyway what I want you to know about this the sermon series about these series of sermons is this isn't one of those sermon series where I'm going to tell you that you've been doing Christmas all wrong. It's not one of these series where uh, we need to feel ashamed about how we celebrate Christmas in our lives and in our families. The goal of these messages is exactly as it says on the screen in the fine print. For us to experience the joy of living and giving like Jesus. The goal of this message series is for you and I to experience a very different Christmas this year. But before we go too far, before I dig in too much to today's topic, let's pause and pray, shall we? God, we have come into this time of worship from a world of demands and schedules. Uh, the Christmas season for many of us is, is busy. There's just stuff going on. And, and God, we, we've come here today just wanting to shed some of that stuff to set it aside at least for a time and seek an inner joy that only your presence, only your peace, only your love can bring into our lives. And so, God, in these next moments, open our hearts and our spirits to your love so that we can receive the message that you have for us today so that we may go from here and proclaim your grace and your truth to those closest to us, to those that need to hear. We just pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Can you believe it? Today is December 12th. Now, I got to be honest, I have an excuse for where the last couple of weeks went, but can you, we are almost to the middle of December already. It is December 12th. We have less than two weeks until Christmas Day. We've got less than two weeks to find those last minute gifts for the people that we love or our friends or our neighbors or our pastor. We've got just less than two weeks to get all of that done. What do they say? It's crunch time, people, right? It's crunch time. So let me just ask, how's your Christmas shopping going this year? How many of you are done? How many of you are all done? Look at that. You're all done. How many of you didn't have anybody on your list, so that's why you're done? Yeah. So let me ask this question. Was your Christmas gift buying easier this year or harder this year? How many of you it was easy? Yeah, a few, yeah. For some of you, it's hard, right? Well, in his book, Christmas is Not Your Birthday, Mike Slaughter puts a couple, three questions before us, and, and I want to share them with you this morning. He says this, How can we change the traditional focus of Christmas from materialistic self-indulgence to giving Jesus what he desires for his birthday? How can we make it less about us and more about him? Now, I love that last question. What can you possibly give the Lord of the universe? Yeah, I, I, I'm willing to wager that most of us here have that one person on our Christmas gift, gift list. That one person that's always a little difficult to buy for. Am I right? Can you, can you think, uh, you got somebody in mind? Uh, there's that person that's, maybe they're just a little tougher to buy for than from anyone else. And, and sometimes it's because they're just super picky. Um, or it might simply be that they're one of those people that just seems to have everything. When uh, Karen and I, early in our marriage, um, and, and I'm willing to admit this, my wife does all the Christmas shopping. I, I grew up celebrating Christmas, but I didn't grow up in a family that taught me how to go out and figure out what to buy for people. Christmas presents weren't a big thing. And so early in our marriage, uh, you know, Christmas is a little different in her family. And so she and I would figure out presents to buy for my parents. And my parents were those type of people that already had everything. They didn't really need anything. And so typically every year we would buy my father a book because my dad liked to read. You know, when Roots came out, we bought him that book. And, and then there was a, a Michener, I don't know. Every book we bought him was about this thick. You know, he loved history, loved all sorts of things. And that was great. We would give them a book and, and they would unwrap it and go, okay, thank you, thank you, great Christmas. And then in the spring would come, you know, April, May. And my mom and dad would do their annual spring cleaning. And for my mom, that meant cleaning the house from ceiling to floor, going through every closet and nook and cranny. And shortly after that, we'd get a call, hey, stop by the house. We got some stuff for you. And we'd stop by and my dad would hand me his Christmas present back. And, and he didn't do it to be rude. It was just simply, I'd read the book. I don't need to read it anymore. You might as well have it back. So we stopped buying them Christmas presents because I got a stack of books. They're all this thick. I don't even want to read. But, but I say all that because there's, there's always that, that one person, right, that's a little tough to buy for, a little difficult to buy for. Maybe it's because they're picky or maybe it's just because they have everything. So now imagine this question that's before us. Imagine having to find the perfect gift for Jesus. What would you get Jesus for his birthday? I know, don't worry. 
because Jesus made it easy for us. Jesus made his wish list very easy for us. He, he puts it right out there and he provides us with exactly what he'd want. And so in the, uh, in the 25th chapter of the book of Matthew, there is this story. Uh, it's a series of parables, but there's a story that Jesus tells about the sheep and the goats. And in that story, many of you have probably heard the story before, in that story, Jesus makes his Christmas or his birthday wish list perfectly clear. Excuse me, just a moment. One of my, um, one of my wonder pills that's allowing me to stand up here and stand kind of straight gives me dry mouth. And so I'm going to be drinking a lot of water today and taking some breaks. But so in the story of the, the sheep and the goats, Jesus gives us his wish list. And, and here's the great news, folks. It's, it's not such a difficult list and it's not so over the top that, that you and I can't get it for him. That you and I can't pick something off of his wish list and take care of it for him. And so let's, um, let's open our Bibles, or maybe you use your Bible app on your phone, that's okay, and, and turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, and, and as I read uh, this morning verses 31 through 40, and as they're up on the screen, I invite you to, to listen along, I invite you to read along, and, and see if you can't pick out Jesus' wish list from these verses. So Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. And all the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. And then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. So did you hear it? Did you find Jesus' wish list in those verses? You see, Jesus' wish list is number one, that, that we would all be sheep. Jesus' wish list is that the way we live our lives, the, the hungry that we meet, that we provide food for, the thirsty that we meet, that we share a drink with, the homeless that we give a room to, or the, the shivering cold that we give them a coat, uh, the sick that we go and visit, or the prisoners that we go and see, are what's on Jesus' Christmas wish list, are what's on Jesus' birthday wish list. See, all of these things are on Jesus' wish list because Jesus' plan for this world is to bring about wholeness through us. We are to be Jesus' hands and feet. Jesus' wish list here in Matthew 25 shows us that we can't separate our relationship with God from our responsibility to God's people. Let me say that again. We can't separate our relationship with God from our responsibility to God's people. See, there's hungry people in this world. There's hungry people right here in our community. There's people that are thirsty. There are people shivering in the cold at night because they don't have a, a warm home or a warm coat. There are, there are sick. There are prisoners. They are right in our midst. And, and we are Jesus' front line to go and serve them, to go and care for them. That's Jesus' wish list. 
Jesus wishes for you and I. What he wants for Christmas is for you and I to do those things, to feed the hungry, to give a drink to the thirsty, a room to the homeless. Our relationship with Jesus, and our relationship with God, and our relationship with God's people are interconnected. We can't have one truly without the other. In his book, again, uh, Christmas is Not Your Birthday, Mike Slaughter writes this. He says, we need to be committed to living more simply so that others may simply live. We need to be committed to living more simply so that others may simply live. Not because, because that's what Jesus desires of his followers. That's what Jesus wants from us. Now, I want to pause here and make sure you understand that, that those words from Mike Slaughter, that he's, he's not saying that we can't give and receive presents this year. He's not saying that we got to scrap all of our buying for our wives or husbands or kids and, and give it all away. What he's saying is, is we need to consider the priority that we give to our Christmas shopping. The priority that we give to the way we celebrate Christmas with family and friends. And so think about this for a minute. Is your giving and receiving this year making a difference in the world? Is your giving and receiving this year going to make a difference in the world? Now, some could, you know, split hairs a little bit with me and say, well, absolutely, all the money that I spend at the store helps pay people's wages and keeps people employed. But that's not really the difference in the world that we're talking about here, is it? You know, is the way that we are going to give and receive gifts this year going to make a difference in the world? Another way to think about it is our giving. Is our Christmas celebrations fulfilling our greatest desires or is it going to fulfill God's greatest desire for us? You see, what Jesus wants most for his birthday is for you and I to do the work that we've been called to do. As, as followers of Jesus, we are called to care for the least and the lost and the lonely. We are the ones, as, as the prophet Isaiah said, called to bring the good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. We are called to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I was... Uh, working on my message a few days back and a lot, sometimes a thought will come to my mind and, and I'll just Google it. I love Google. Google is a, you know, that's a, that's a godsend sometimes. But I always just, sometimes I just need to know where that thought came from. And at any rate, I was... I don't know how it came up, but in, in, my, in my sermon preparation, I came across this blog post online. And uh, it, was about a, it was a blog post about a little book called The Sparkle Box. And, and I noticed this box sitting out in the gathering area earlier. And so I, I brought it for you so that we could have a sparkle box before us. Has, has anybody ever, do you have that book? It's a, it's a children's book. It's called The Sparkle Box. Anybody? Yeah, I'd never heard of it either, but... Um, so at any rate, I, I came across that blog post and promptly kind of forgot about it as fast as I came across it. And then yesterday it dawned on me, hey, I want to know that story. And so I went back and found it. And, and, and it's, this, it's this children's book that is meant to be used to teach children about what's really on Jesus' Christmas wish list. And it's a story about a young man named Sam and, and a young boy named Sam and his mom and dad. And, um, and they are getting ready for Christmas in their family. It's, a, it's, it's, you know, the beginning of Advent. You know, it's right after Thanksgiving. And, and so this year, as Sam and his mom and dad are decorating their home for Christmas, underneath the Christmas tree, they put this sparkle box they put this sparkle box and Sam notices it and he's kind of wondering about it. And so they tell him that that box is under the tree and it's a special present that they are going to be giving to Jesus for his birthday. And they're going to be getting it ready throughout these next days and weeks leading up to Christmas. And they will finally open it on Christmas Day. 
Well, I don't know what kind of kid you were when you were younger. Um, and I, I don't know how Christmas went in your house. But, but in my house, as I said, Christmas wasn't a huge deal. Um, you know, my mom and dad never did the whole Santa thing. And so as they got a gift bought a gift for us kids it went under the tree my mom would wrap it it would go under the tree and so you know shortly after thanksgiving the tree went up and presents started to arrive and some of them had my name on them and i'm just wondering is there anybody here like me that when they were younger they snuck that present out from under the tree and unwrapped it to peek and see what was inside yeah tim thank you man i'm glad i'm not alone yeah so that, you know what I'm talking about? That presence there under the tree and it's driving you nuts because you want to know what's in it. Well, that was for this young boy named Sam. That was the sparkle box. And so that thought of that sparkle box excited him and it made him wonder. And, and as the story goes, over the next weeks leading up to Christmas, Sam and his parents go about their usual daily lives, their usual Christmas presents. And, and besides just doing their usual Christmas shopping, they also take time to, to donate to a local food pantry. They, they go and buy some blankets and give to the local homeless shelter. One day, Sam got so caught up in, in all of this stuff that, that he, was, he was purchasing some mittens and a candy bar to take to school with him for his school gift exchange. But on the way out of the store, he noticed this man, this homeless man, this man that he had seen on the streets, and, and he noticed that he was kind of cold, and he thought maybe he was a little bit hungry, and so he gave him the mittens and the candy bar. But every day, every day Sam had to walk past that Christmas tree in that sparkle box. And every day almost he would ask his mom and dad, can I open it now? Can I open it now? And, and each time his mom or his dad would reply, nope, we can't open it yet. It isn't ready, but we can put something in it today. Well, finally, Christmas morning arrives and, and Sam comes downstairs and the tree, of course, has presents. And, but that sparkle box catches his eye. And so he says to his mom and dad, can I open it now? And they say, yes, you can open it. But remember, this isn't your gift. This is Jesus' birthday gift. This is a present that we are giving to Jesus this year. Well, Sam opens it up and he takes the top off that sparkle box and inside he finds several pieces of paper. And written on them are things like, gave a blanket to a homeless person, worked at the food pantry to feed the hungry, made a donation to provide a water well in Africa, gave mittens and a candy bar to a man in need. Sam read those pieces of paper and he was confused. He says, they hadn't given anything to Jesus for Christmas. These were things that they had done throughout the month for people who were in need. And I love how the story ends. The story ends with Sam sitting with his mother and his mother says to him, you are right. You are right, those were things that we did for people in need, but no gift could make Jesus happier because he taught us that whatever we do for people in need, we do for him. It's a great kid's book, isn't it? And, and that sparkle box became a simple way for Sam's parents to teach him about sharing and about doing the kind of things that Jesus really wants for Christmas. And all of that got me thinking of how funny, strange it is, how in real life we can find it so hard to buy gifts for people that we love. We can find it so hard to buy gifts for those certain family members or friends who are unusually picky or seem to have everything. And yet it's so clear what Jesus wants from us. It's so clear what Jesus wants from us. He wants us as we are going about our everyday lives, as we are preparing to celebrate Christmas with our own families and our own homes that we look and we seek out ways to serve others. 
buying food for somebody that's hungry or a blanket for somebody that's cold. See, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus just wants us this Christmas to give him our time and our talents and our treasure in service to others. So I want to challenge us. We've got less than two weeks until Christmas. You now have Jesus' wish list before you. I want to challenge us to make this a very different Christmas. To find a way to check off something, if you will, on Jesus' wish list. To, to make this Christmas not just about more stuff, but to make it more about Jesus. Because after all, it is Jesus' birthday. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we're sitting here in the, the stillness of this space and we realize that in a few moments, in a few minutes, we're going to leave from here and, and we're going to be going right back into the chaos and the commotion of our lives of this Christmas season. And so God, right now, will you calm our hearts and minds? Will you help us to keep our focus on what you truly want from us this Christmas season? God, there are people that we have brought with us in our hearts and our minds. People that need your care right now, God. And so we are asking, God, that you meet their need. Comfort those who are mourning this day. Heal those, God, who are hurting. Surround them with your presence so that they may truly feel your love. And God, as we are praying for others, we pray for ourselves that you would take away our selfishness and, and teach us to love others as you love us. Take away our sense of pride and show us the true meaning of humility this Christmas season. Take away the blinders from our eyes and, and show us how to see the world as you see it. Take away our greed and teach us to give as you have given to us. But most importantly, God, I pray right now that you will grant each of us the courage and, and the real willingness to talk about the love that came down to earth and lived among us that first Christmas. Give us the courage and the willingness to talk about Jesus with family and friends with the person we meet at the grocery store or the gas station. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.